어, 세상에는 두 종류 사람이 있습니다. There are two kinds of people in the world. 어, 구원받은 자와 구원 못 받은 자입니다. And one kind is those who are saved, and the other kind is those who are not saved. It regards whether you attend church or not. 어떤 종교든 어, 상관없이 구원받은 자. Regardless of whatever religion, it is those who are saved versus those who are not saved. Those who are saved are bound to live according to what God has given them. Then absolutely the answer of the 237 nations will come. 오늘 여러분들이 이 삼칠 헌신 예배 드리는 것은 이 언약을 잡은 것. And today, as we are giving the two three seven missions devotional word of service, is because you're holding on to the start of my two three seven. 이 부분은 처음부터 약속하셨어요. And this is something that God promised us from the very beginning. 제일 처음부터 약속. From the very beginning, Genesis twelve one through three. 네 시로 말미암아. Through your seed, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. 이말 알아들은 사람에게. And to those who understood this word, he gave us the blessing of the 237 nations. It was a very answer that resolved the seven disasters. From the moment that you truly grab onto this covenant, and you see this Matthew 28, verse 19, Go and make disciples of all nations. And then this is what he said. Baptize them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Which means that he's promising to those who are holding on to this covenant that he will work upon them with the power of the word of God, the power of the redemption of work of Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why you need to know exactly what kind of answers are on your way, on their way. That is why worship is so important. Praying alone is very important. As I mentioned during the first worship service, those who are nurturing young children, the parents, you must really not be dismayed. Just hold on to the covenant. Then your children, your posterity will absolutely arise and correctly enjoy the gospel. And each and every time, God mobilized his heavenly armies of angels and fulfilled and preached God's word, Acts 1.11. And every time there is difficulty, Acts 27.24, an angel of the Lord stood beside me and said, even exactly right now, we are receiving these answers. You must absolutely firmly grab hold of this word and pray at least for this week. Otherwise, you're listening to the sermon every week and it will just simply pass by. And you'll be listening to You'll be listening to another sermon. You don't need to listen to the sermon. You're holding on to God's voice and his covenant. Perhaps the pastors are giving sermon for the congregation members, but actually we are all together listening to God's voice and holding on to the covenant together. And those who understand this word have no choice but to realize this blessing and receive this answer. And it is precisely the very moment that you start my 237 nations. From the moment that Joseph was sold as a slave, that work began. Moses could not hold on to that until he was 80, but the very moment that he was able to hold on to it, it all started. It's the same even right now. 
청년들이 걱정하지 말고 안 믿습니다만은 하지 마세요. Although I tell many young adults not to worry, but they don't believe me. But truly, do not worry. 그 우리 교회는 다른 교회보다 잘났다 이 말이 아니고요. 우리만이라도 보험전이 돼. I'm not saying that our church is more outstanding than other churches, but at least that we need to hold on to the gospel. 하나님이 축복하실 거다. 이런 계산이 아니고. And it's not that oh, we are so calculative that we are want to receiving God's blessings. But we must evangelize anyways, but he promised us to bless us when we evangelize. So it's not just only the level of the two, three, seven missions, and then we are doing church construction. But we need to have all of our posterity to arise and really save all the churches in Europe and restore all the churches that are closing down in America. Remnants must arise and save all the churches that are closing down in Korea. 이 교육의 땅도 그 케이스 하나요. 여기 계시던 목사님이 제보고 중요한 말씀을 하셨어요. And that was the case of the predecessor of our church at building because the pastor of that church said this. 불신자가 가지고 가지고 그래도 하나님의 교회를 했던 데인데 불신자가 돈더 많이 주고 살라고 하는데 그게 팔면 이게 이상하게 되지 않냐 이거요. He said, "Oh, Pastor Yu, uh, there is another buyer who, which is an unbeliever, who wants to buy this church building. But you know what? It would be such a great loss if an unbeliever buys this church building of God." 우리 여기 지금 자지담은 불신자서 내면서 이상한 거 만들 수 있어요. 그렇잖아요. So this building could have been sold off to an unbeliever, and this building could have turned into something that is ridiculous. 아니 중요한 게 아니지만은 하나님의 영광은 절대로 많은 사람을 살리고 죽인 데 관계 있기 때문에. It's, it's not that the land property matters a lot, but God's glory is so significant. It's a matter of life and death of saving all these people. That's why we must firmly hold on to God's covenant. What has God promised to those who are holding on to the covenant of my 237? You need to look at that first. What did God promise from the beginning? Knowing that we cannot do the two three seven ourselves, He promised us the blessing of the throne from the beginning. As soon as He resurrected, I have all the authority of heaven and earth. He even explained the works pertaining to God's kingdom for forty days. That's what He promised. So if you begin this promise, this prayer, we shared this last week. The answer that transcends time and space will come. Even though you're holding on to this covenant right here, but God's works can arise transcending time and space in all other fields. If you don't know, then there's no need for you to worship, there's no need for you to pray, there's no need for you to believe in God. There's no need for you to come to church. Everything is not necessary. What's the need for you to go to a, a, your at work? You just need to just pick up things from the street. It's the transcendence of time and space. 여러분의 학업이, 여러분의 산업이, 여러분의 직업이. From this point on, your studies, your occupation, your businesses will turn into the two, three, seven. 그는 우리가 아무 힘들지만 하나님이 하시겠다고 약속하셨어. It will be so hard if we are to do it, but God promised that He will do it. 하나님 나라 일을 사십일 동안 설명하시고는 성령 충만 받으면 권능 받고. After explaining things pertaining to God's kingdom for 40 days, he said that when you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive power and you'll be my witness to the ends of the earth. This was the promise of Jesus. Not sure whether they're saved or not, but there are many people who lost hold of this at the Corinth church. That's why you see in today's scripture reading. They had many 
infighting between different factions. They had different factions divided into the party that belonging to Apollos or uh, Paul or Cephas. I guess it is something that's so obvious for those who are not saved. That's how they were divided. It's not a matter of well, whether they are too bad. It's just that there is nothing else for them to do if they are not saved. Even if a pastor who is not saved, just like Judas Iscariot, uh, he will just defraud many people. He will tempt so many people and he will defraud many people of all the money with offerings. So as a person who is not saved, what else is not worked to? These days, strange people come to the seminary. That's why we must be careful. And people who are not even saved. So it's a matter of course, people get engaged in all these disputes and fighting. And they're so jealous of each other. If there's jealousy, what happens? Then they fight. And that's what Paul pointed out in today's scripture reading. <coughs> so this is a region of Corinth. They had this magnificent shrine. They had this too much of idolatry and so much meat was entering into the shrine and they were trying to resell it in the market. And since such meat from the shrine was now sold in the market, many people were fighting, oh, should we buy that meat and eat that meat? And because people in Corinth were fighting so much, Paul said, it's not so, so important whether you eat it or not eat it. It doesn't really matter. Just because it was a sacrificial meat that was offered in the shrine, just by eating it, do we partake in that idolatry? But at the same time, do we really want are eager to eat that kind of meat? That's what he was saying. And in that huge shrine, there are about 2,000 prostitutes inside of that idolatrous shrine. Then what was going to happen? And the day that they have these you know, festivals inside the sacrifices, they have all these obscene activities. And that's why the early church tried to protect the women of the church, and then they were to put on a white veil to cover up themselves in order to protect them. And there is this obscenity in, from the shrine. And there is even incest that was committed inside the church of Corinth. And Paul was really giving all this admo admonitions and warnings against that. What must we leave behind to our posterity and to our TCK remnants? This is our start. It is 1 Corinthians 3.16. Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? How can we properly save all the 237 nations. You must absolutely hold on to this. It is possible. How can we block the disasters that are impending upon the 237 nations and save them first? 
that myself is God's temple. Just believe that. Second, your studies, your work, and your business is God's temple. Last week, your life in and of itself is living sacrifice. Because it is secret, do not be deceived. Wherever you are, you are God's living sacrifice. From this day on, your work, your occupation is God's temple. And every field that you go to is God's temple. This is it. It is very simple. That's why wherever you are, regardless of receiving answers, just pray to God. Because one day you will come to realize and confirm that undoubtedly God's accurate answers are there. 내가 말이지 진짜 잘못 없는데 억울한 일 당한다 걱정하지 마세요. Perchance that you feel so indignant because you're just unjustly accused. 나는 위해서 어떤 거는 양보한다 큰 축복입니다. And for for God's work that you yield and you make concessions, that's great. 여러분이 복음 때문에 기뻐를 받는다 이거는 백년짜리 응답입니다. And perchance if you're persecuted because of the gospel, that's a century worth of answers. That's why do not worry. You must remember this. And last week it was a living sacrifice, and this week is God's temple. What does God's temple mean? And how is that possible that we are God's temple? Because God has given us His gift. Genesis 1.27, he implanted God's image within us. That God planted his image within us. We are not like animals, only to humans. And it's nice as people are so good to dogs as pets, but they are not made in God's image. And there are even dog suits and shoes for dogs. And my daughter said, oh, there are special gums for dogs to chew on. Regardless, there is no spirit of God, there is no image of God among dogs. I'm not, you know, I don't promote eating dog meat but, or dog soup, but it's not unbiblical to eat that but because dogs don't have God's image. Whether they're dogs or, or pigs, they're the same. It's only specially human beings that we are created in God's image. Genesis 2.7, Genesis 2.18. And we can enjoy this blessing every day through prayer. This was forfeited, but Genesis 3.15, the offspring of women crushed the head of the serpent. And from this moment on, every time you pray, triune God is present within you. That is prayer. May you pray for this every day. And the power, the power of the throne is within you, present within us. And that's what it means that we have become God's temple. Why is that? Because the Spirit of God is living inside of me. I am God's temple. Because God is with me, inside of me, that's why I'm God's temple. And this is a form that we need to actually have and whenever I personally meet with people, I say this. There are some people who get offended if I have a counseling with them because I rebuke them. 
Because they consider a problem to be something that is shouldn't be a problem. And to a person that I know for over 10 years, I rebuke that person. I knew that was a person that we've been doing evangelism together, but by coincidence, we met together on the plane and the person coincidentally sat next to me and then I recognized him. It was a person who used to evangelize together with me a long time ago. And as soon as he got on the plane, he began to just blurt out all kinds of unbelief. And he changed so much and he was just criticizing, you know, making all these bad comments about his church, about his church pastor. Of course, I can understand because he was so frustrated. But I just stopped him from saying anything further. I do know your church pastor, and I agree with you 100%. He is such a person. Yes, because of his humanism, he harasses so many people. And it is so strange, I know. There are so many people who are so strange. They want to take advantage of the church for their own gain and profit. But why does that matter to you? Because when you and I evangelized long time ago, that your wife had to write a waiver form to, for the doctor to take surgery on you with so much of risk, and, but God saved you anyways. And did you actually confess to God and made the resolution that I will live my life for God for the rest of my life? So why don't you pray together with your son? Why is that a problem to you? I know that person. That's what you got to do. And he was just, just crying and weeping. And I said, your thoughts are fake, that your pastor is fake. Everything is so fake. That's why we need to have this forum of concentrating on God. We can really finish this. Don't you know that yourselves are God's temple and the Spirit of God lives inside of you? And why don't you give worship to God and just make a note of this on your prayer journal and just wait and see what's going to happen? And this is the work that took place through these two individuals, Priscilla and Aquila and Evangelist Paul. What happened? Acts 18, verses 1 through 4. They entered into synagogue and they had this occupation of tent making and God blessed them so that they can do world evangelization. Your business is God's temple. It is a temple where God is present and where God dwells. And Acts 18, verses 24 through 28, they saved Apollos. And then ultimately, Romans 16, verses 3 to 4, up to Rome evangelization. So God, when God works it, it's when God works, then everything is, take, is to take place. When there was a huge fire that broke out, that our household became the poorest out of all the neighbors, that could happen. And maybe because I lack faith, I thought supposedly that was the case. But my mother, who was holding on to the covenant, was not wavering. She always held on to the covenant and prayed. And I'm so sorry to say this. Even though she had nothing, she became the person who devoted the most in that entire community. Your occupation, your... 
work as God's temple is not because of you acquire so much wealth that you can devote yourselves to God. So look at this. Look at the streams of the seven remnants. The field is God's temple. And he went to Potiphar's house, and that was a field where God worked. And it was a prison that was God's temple where God worked. And these people went to the remnants and preached the gospel there, and that was their temple. That was God's temple where God worked. So this is all God's temple. What kind of temple is this? It is a temple where God's secret, His mysteries are fulfilled. And you get discouraged when you, after you're praying that there's no answer, um, but there is a time that's most important. After leaving the royal palace, Moses prayed in the median for 40 years, but there was no answer. But that was his misconception. God prepared what was the best. It was no answer. Even that powerful Elijah, that he had this misunderstanding, God, I cannot do it anymore. So just God call me to heaven. And what kind of prayer is that? But that was his prayer. Because God was actually in full preparation at the time. He did not even begun. So let's come to the conclusion. After all the messages and after all the works, hold fast to this line of prayer. That's all it takes. Still, there will be many people who will not understand you. Still, hold on to this line of prayer. And even your family members will not be able to fully understand you. Hold fast to this line of prayer. Even your closest friends, although they can be comforting to you, but they cannot be your solution. Hold fast to this line of prayer. Special characteristics of the seven remnants is that they always held on to this line of prayer no matter what circumstance they were in. Where is my current address or current residence? Just hold fast to this line of prayer. And Paul confessed. Where is my current address? He said, I can do all things in him who strengthens me. This is what he said when he was in prison. But not in prison, he said, In Christ who strengthens me, I can do all things. That is right. That's the case for me. We have no power or strength to do anything on our own. I utilize whole day to do this. 393 prayer. And these days I have one more. Oh, I see that this age of universe has opened up. I'm now praying for universe. 
This is my prayer that I do every day. 393, the power of the universe and five powers, and it's all encompassed inside of this. And this is a prayer that I enjoy every day. In a sense, if you're doing this prayer all the time, it doesn't matter whether you see answers or not. Because the triune God, uh, it, with the power of the throne, is with me for my future to eternity. So it doesn't matter, there's nobody who's recognizing you. It's all right, even if that you are at a loss, because there's no such a law, there's no such an event. Five powers, because you are bound to enjoy this. So why don't you do it starting from right now? As you hold on to this message, why don't you concentrate so that you can have the start of my 237 nations? May God work upon my work, my studies, and my businesses. So even if there's no visible answers, there's no tangible answer. Why? Because everything will work for the good of those who love Him. Let us pray. Father God, would you work upon us by your power? Work upon us invisibly by the power of the thrive. Triune God, who is our creator, would you heal us? Heal all of our spiritual aspects. Would you heal all of our disease parts? All would you revive all aspects of our life with the power of the throne? And would you block everything that's blocking the gospel? May you block all the power of the force of darkness. May all the force of darkness be bound. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.